Good morning, Islanders. I'm Leo Almada. And I'm Alexa Villasenor. Today is May 31st, 2023. Welcome to this week's episode of Islander Insider. Let's get started with some announcements. First off, today, Islander Awards are being hosted at the Hotel Dell at 6 p.m. If you were invited, make sure to be there by 5.30 p.m. <laughs> Juniors, counselors are still hosting workshops with outside college representatives. This week's workshop will talk about how to pay for college, and the June 6th class will focus on applying to four-year university art programs and specialized art schools. Friday is the Powderpuff, fo is the Powderpuff football game. We have a pep rally that day, so be sure to know what the special schedule is. For those with free first period, second period starts at 9.55. The game will start at 7 p.m., so come out and support juniors and seniors in this battle of the classes. Counselors want to remind everyone that course change requests will close on June 15th. If you need to change your schedule, you must email, you need to, if you must, if you need to change your schedule, you must email your counselor as soon as possible, but no later than June 15th. Also, seniors, the counselors need you to enter the information for your future schools into your Squire account so they know what your college or post-secondary plans are. Especially if you're enrolling in college, uh, especially if you're enrolling in college. This way they can help you with your college orientation checklist and send your final transcripts to your new college. Now, here is ASB. What's up, CHS? I'm Matt Slentz from ASB, coming at you live from the broadcast. We've got a couple announcements this week. Friday is Powder Puff. The game will be at 7 p.m. Tailgate will be at 5.30 p.m. And juniors and seniors, make sure to collect, check your Instagram pages for updates on class bonding events. It's also Spirit Week, so today is anything but a backpack day. Tomorrow is Baggy Clothes Day, and Friday is Pink versus Blue Day. One last thing is that the merchandise design competition is going to end this Friday, so make sure to get those submissions in if you want to see some custom merchandise featured in the student store next year. Now back to Leo with the broadcast. Thank you, ASB. Uh, other news, summer school applications are now open. If you're taking a class outside of CHS during summer, make sure to get Ms. Redding, make sure to get Ms. Redding your, your transcript and talk to your counselor to make sure you're enrolled in the right courses next year. We've all seen, now, we've all seen our Islander Company Navy ROTC uh, cadets, our Islander Company Navy ROTC cadets at events around the school and our community. But let's take a closer look at their hard work and dedication. Here are Ramsey and Eddie with a story. Uh, the class is super chill. Um, it's nothing like you would expect from an outside perspective. You think it's like the super uptight like military class, but it's super chill and everyone's just kind of having their own good time. I think my highlight of the year was probably during like an armed X practice, armed exhibition, which is where you kind of like you spin rifles. It looks really cool. You do you go to drill meets and stuff. It was one pra one morning practice. We kind of got in a circle and we practiced like throwing the rifle to each other. It was just really funny to watch. My favorite part of ROTC is the drill season, and it uh, happens in the fall. And usually we we go to other schools and compete as a team. Now we have a wide variety of competitions and activities, you know, whether, whether we're talking about doing color guard events, uh, community service events, uh, as far as teams, we have academic teams, we have an underwater robotics team, a drone team, cyber team, we have marching teams, drill teams, uh, we have uh, orienteering teams, that's uh, basically cross country with a map. Uh, basically, if it's something that you're interested in, there's a good chance that NGRTC has a team for it. My favorite parts about ROTC are the PT days we do every week. Um, they're always a good time, and me and my friends really push each other. I think the environment of NGRTC is like very supportive. We're always there for each other, always like pushing each other to go further. Uh, highlight of the year is definitely military ball. It's kind of our pat on the back for doing so good over the year, and um, yeah, it's just it's a great time. Um, NGRTC is really all about developing leadership and citizenship. You know, there's there's a lot of folks that think that this might be like a military recruitment program, and it's not. That's not what it's about at all. It's really about uh, getting cadets out there, uh, you know, developing their citizenship through things like community service, uh, developing their leadership in the classroom, or uh, developing their leadership through uh, the team activities, whether that's as a team captain or a competitor in all of the different events that we do out in town. Uh, so that's really what the core of our program is, citizenship and leadership development. 
thank you to the NJROTC cadets and their leaders for participating in our story. Question, are you looking for a summer internship? If you are, the Counselor's Canvas page has summer opportunities in, in summer opportunities interning at the Women's Museum with the FBI Teen Summer Program and so much more. You can find the link to the Canvas page on Ms. Molina's newsletter. Now, as school winds down for the year, many of the Costa Conservatories are putting on their final shows. Last week was the Dig Arts Extravaganza, and Iker and I found out what it was all about. The Extravaganza is a CHS show composed by multiple Costa classes, such as graphics design, game design, and film. We will be now taking a look at people who have worked on the show and perspective of a visitor. So the benefit of having our end of the year extravaganza is that we get a chance to show our entire school how hard um, our students work, but also how cool our program really is. And it gives kids an opportunity to see not just graphic design, not just photography, but the film. And of course, as the film teacher, I'm super proud of the documentaries that were sh shown. And then we also had film noir and our senior capstones were various. So we had a fictional um, story, and then we also had a documentary. And so um, it's just a really great opportunity for us to really show our community how hard we work and how cool our art really can be. The Dig Arts Extravaganza, like I said before, is the end of the year culmination of everything. And it's different for us because it is almost like our Academy Awards. We give out awards for kids um, in Every single category, there's a judge's choice and there's a viewer's choice. So our viewers get to um, watch and they get to view all the different art that is at the um, displayed in the lobby, and then they get to choose winners. Um, so that's a really different aspect of the show than any other that we've done for the rest of the year. Students need a significant amount of time to create these pieces, especially animation and game design. They're very, very time sensitive and um, they take a lot of time to create um, as long as well as film. I really enjoyed the art gallery because I got to see other similar photos to mine and it was, I thought it was just really interesting to see how students you know took their photos compared to mine and it was kind of nice like comparing and contrasting them. So I did find a few pieces to be quite interesting. I liked how some students utilize unique principles that really have been used in the class to take their photos because their pieces just really stood out compared to the other pieces some other students uh, submitted. I think all the animations are really cool. I like how a lot of the students you know, really put a lot of time and effort into it because they all really did stand out and they're all really unique and interesting to watch. At the COSA Digital Arts Extravaganza, I just went there to support my friends and see all the cool film, video games, and just like all the designs and animations people have made throughout the year. And it was so cool just to see, just like my friends and what they do like outside of school. The animation segment was so fun. Just to see how much work just goes into it overall and the completed process of it was very interesting to see. Just going to this experience overall was so fun because just seeing the different strands that aren't really talked about or like, I guess, put focus on was just interesting to see. Because like before going to this, I didn't know, you know, game design was a thing like at all. So I was sick. Congratulations to Miss Evenson, Miss Worman, and Mr. Cho and all the DigArts teachers on a great show. Speaking of art, this year's AP Portfolio class created an 8 by 10 foot permanent installation that will be unveiled on Tuesday, June 6th during fourth period. The class will be dedicating the new work to a person who is very special to the class of 23. So come over to the library during fourth period next Tuesday to celebrate with food, drinks, and live music from the CHS band, Turtlefin. The party starts at 2 p.m. We know you are just beginning to think about all your summer options, but fall sports registrations open soon, so be on the lookout for that. Also, return all your athletic equipment to the sports office or after-school trainer as soon as possible. For those who are taking the SAT test, registration is now open for August to December exams. Check the weekly newsletter for more information about registering. Now, here's Abby Ross with a special story about style that shows her skill in using multiple forms of media to present a story. We want to congratulate Abby, who was selected for the JCAL summer pro program in Sacramento, where she will practice journalism. Closet of CHS. 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 <laughs> um, I describe my style probably like 
um, 60s, 70s, 80s. Just a lot of inspiration probably from like Pinterest and just like old photos. I like a lot of things vintage. I thrift a lot um, and I try to buy clothes secondhand. I'm a big fan of denim and crop shirts and stuff. And yeah, in terms of style, I don't really have any specific um, words. My style is probably like, I don't know, I want to say grunge, but I feel like everyone's saying grunge. I'd probably like describe it as like, yeah, new wave, something like that. I'd say that my style inspiration, again, like Pinterest. When I thrift, I take inspiration from like pieces that I find. I kind of like build outfits around those pieces. I don't know, like a lot of my friends, I really like their style. I don't really like look at that much stuff online, but yeah, I just like stuff off of Pinterest and people I follow on TikTok, that's it. Who's your style inspo? Probably like Mr. Shanaka, yeah, definitely. My favorite styling tip is just be unique and like not be afraid to experiment with whatever you want, even if people are like dogging on you. Cause you know, I've had like days where I come into school with like a trash outfit and I get made fun of, but you know, I think it's fire. Ooh, I'd say probably um, find pieces that like, no one else has, so like go to thrift stores um, and then dress like proportionately for your body. Like just don't wear neon. I don't know. I've never seen anyone look good in neon. No offense to people who wear neon. I'm wearing my dad's old varsity jacket. I'm wearing thrifted jeans, loafers, and just like a basic white tee. I'm wearing um, Target tights, Converse, um, thrifted Old Navy jacket, mm -hmm. and then this is like a thrifted little thermal. Yeah, right now I got Converse One Stars on. Um, I thrifted these jeans and I cut them off because they're too long. I thrifted this shirt. Um, I just had like a Hanes long sleeve uh, white t-shirt under this. And yeah. Oh, and I got this Ladybug key charm off of eBay and it's a clock. Thanks, Abby. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. Teachers, please share the link to the Islander Advisory Team survey that Ms. Molina posted for Homeroom in the newsletter this week. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Islander underscore Insider. We'll see you next week.